Welcome to the course on our signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about the sinusoidal model. In the theory lectures uh, we actually presented the model and uh, we presented it from a signal processing and mathematical point of view. In this uh, demonstration class I want to present it from a practical point of view, so actually using it. So let's uh, go directly to the SMS tools uh, GUI and uh, let's start with the DFT model and let's open one sine wave this uh, sine wave at 440 Hertz okay so uh, let's uh, listen to that okay so let's use a Hanning window that's fine maybe let's use a window size of uh, 511 and maybe uh, an FFT size of 1024 we compute it Okay, so this is the sine wave, the magnitude phase spectra, and the reconstructed uh, signal from the spectrum. The sinusoidal model will attempt to find the peak, the spectral peak, the height, the location, and the phase corresponding to that location. Of course, it will do it for the whole sound, so it will start from the STFT. So if we uh, get the same sound and get the same type of parameters 511 and 1024 and let's just uh, put this half of that uh, window and this will be the STFT and the spectrogram uh, we listen the output okay it's pretty good so in here we are seeing this uh, uh, red line which is basically the peak as it evolves in time, which is very stable, and in the phase we see this uh, clear area, which is the flat uh, phase of the main lobe. Okay, but now let's go to the sine wave, uh, the sine model, and let's do the same thing. Let's open the sine. Let's use the same parameters: uh, 511 and uh, 124. And now we're starting with the parameters that are specific for a sinusoidal analysis. For example, we have the magnitude threshold, which is the magnitude uh, threshold in decibels that we're going to be looking uh, for. So uh, we're going to be looking for peaks that are uh, within 50 dB from the, the 0 dB from the maximum of the sound. Uh, we can restrict the duration of the tracks, uh, for example, well, let's just put zero, so no, no restriction. We can restrict the maximum number of sinusoids, 150 is plenty, in fact there is only one. And we can restrict the deviation from frame to frame in terms of how this track evolves. And here we have put 10 at the lowest frequency, and then normally it's good to that this uh, deviation changes as the fre frequency goes up, and as the frequency grows up, it's good to increase this deviation. So this is the increasing factor of this deviation as the frequency goes up. Okay, so let's compute that. And, okay, interestingly enough, we are seeing more than one line. Okay, there's resynthesis, we can listen to that. That's pretty good, it's a sinusoid, but in the analysis, here we are only seeing the frequency values of the peaks. We are not seeing the magnitude or the phase. So, um, being uh, there is four lines, but clearly they may not be the same amplitude. So, where do these come from? In fact, they come from the side lobes. We specified a magnitude threshold of minus 50, and if we go back to the the signal the DFT and if we zoom into the the peak well we're going to see that apart from the main peak there is side lobes that are peaks and are within 50 decibels of the maximum um, energy so therefore uh, these have been picked up if we want to not pick up these uh, these uh, side lobes we should reduce this, uh, this threshold, for example, minus 20. And now, yeah, now there is only one line. Okay, let's uh, complicate this and let's uh, analyze uh, uh, a little bit more complicated signal, for example, two sine waves. So let's go back to the DFT 
and let's get rid of all these uh, um, windows and let's open the the sum of two sine waves 440 and 490 hertz summing together and let's uh, maybe um, well we have to choose uh, the the window size appropriate for a specific window and we talked in the theory class that in order to do that we, we can use an equation that says that uh, it has to be the number of beans of the window in the case of Hunting window is 4 times the sampling rate which is uh, in this case 4400 100, 44, and we have to divide it by the frequency distance that we want to resolve in this case between 440 and 490 hertz so 50 hertz okay so this number 3528 is the size of m, the minimum size of m, if we want the two main lobes of these two sinusoids to be separate. So if we put here 2, 3, 5, and we'll put it uh, as an odd size, so we'll put uh, 3, 5 to 9, the FFT has to be uh, bigger than that, a power of 2, and let's just analyze at this point. Okay, and now if uh, maybe we zoom in into this uh, region, we will see okay the two peaks of the two sinusoids okay then we will do the the sinusoidal model we'll do the short time for a transfer and let's go directly to the sinusoidal model and let's put the same values let's get the sum of these two sinusoids uh, which maybe let's uh, listen it okay and now uh, we can set up the values as three five two nine okay and again FFT size 4096 and okay the rest of the parameters uh, let's uh, lower the, the, the threshold I think uh, minus 20 maybe it's a little bit too little let's just uh, put minus uh, 30 for example okay uh, and let's leave this the others the same as we had before okay let's uh, compute that Okay, and now we have the original sound and the resynthesized, we can listen to that. Okay, that's pretty good. And if we zoom into this uh, area, okay, we, we see the two lines, the 440 hertz and 490 hertz. What happens if this size is not large enough? For example, what happens if it's 1800? And of course, we don't need uh, such a big FFT. Um, let's 248 is sufficient and I think that in here let's let's make sure that uh, we save and let's uh, have a, a lower uh, threshold let's say minus 40 and let's uh, leave this the others the same okay and now we see something interesting okay so if we listen to the output sound it's not that bad but if we look at the analysis, it definitely very different. Okay, if we look at the analysis, okay, what we are seeing is kind of a, uh, it gets confused. Sometimes it finds to, sometimes it doesn't. So clearly, uh, we don't have enough resolution for discriminating clearly these two sinusoids. Even though when we sum it all together, it doesn't sound that bad okay but anyway we'll have to pay attention to this and make sure that we understand how the parameters have to be set for uh, analyzing uh, uh, specific types of sound and now let's go to um, a sound a real sound let's uh, use the the oboe sound and um, let's go directly to uh, the oboe sound which um, is uh, it's the note A4 at 440 hertz. So let's uh, calculate again this uh, the, the distance that we need to the the size of the window that we need to have. Maybe let's change the window and let's put for example a Blackman window. Let's okay. What should be the window size for this sound? Okay, the Blackman window. The number of beans is six. The sampling rate is the same, 44,100. And now we have to divide by the fundamental frequency. The fundamental frequency of this sound is 440 hertz, and that's the distance between two consecutive harmonics. 
So we will put 440 hertz here. And this is the size that we need, 601 samples. Okay, so let's put 601 samples. F50 size, well, let's put uh, the next uh, part of two. And now, of course, we are dealing with a, a, a big sound that has a lot of harmonics and they will go pretty much down. So let's put a more, a, a bigger threshold, so lower uh, value. Okay, so let's put minus uh, 80. And now we can, uh, these, uh, uh, these parameters matter a bit. So they might be spurious kind of tracks. So let's get rid of tracks that are small. So for example, 0 0.05, so we, we get rid of that. In this case, now we will need quite a bit of sinusoids, and we definitely will need this uh, deviation. Uh, so this uh, will be a deviation that will be quite useful. Okay, and uh, let's compute it. Of course, it takes longer because it's a, it's a much more complex sound. Okay, and this is uh, the result, the original sound. The, the tracks, here we only visualize in the first 5,000, but if we would go higher, we would see more. And we see pretty good all the horizontal lines. And of course, here at the end, there may be some uh, harmonics that are disappearing. Let's listen to the original. And the synthesizer. Okay, that's pretty good. What happens if, for example, the threshold is not low enough? Let's put minus 30, for example. And let's recompute it. Okay, now what we are seeing is that it has not been able to capture all the harmonics. The harmonics that were too uh, soft were not uh, analyzed. So let's hear what uh, we got back. Clearly, this is only a part of that sound. And that's basically what I wanted to talk about. So, uh, this was uh, a class that I tried to introduce the, the sinusoidal model from a practical perspective. And, of course, we have used the SMS tools, the GUI, and these uh, sinusoidal sounds that we have, uh, and the oboe sound we have uh, been uh, playing around with come from Freesound. And that's all. So hopefully that has given you a practical view on the sinusoidal model. Of course, this requires for you to practice quite a bit more. Uh, you, it's, it's very important to analyze uh, many sounds and to actually see how, what is the effect of the different parameters on different sounds. And in fact, that's what we're going to do next demonstration class. So I hope to see you in next demonstration class where we will actually analyze a more complex sound and go into the sinusoidal model uh, more deeply. So, see you next time.